Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Walker, I'm the host of the Wrestling Matters Podcast, as you well know, and uh, you're probably wondering what's going on, what's this about, you're probably thinking, what, what, you know, why am I on this camera, you don't usually see it, you usually see me and a picture of the NWO, well, I've decided to do something a little different, now, I'm going to be talking in this video about uh, Extreme Rules pay-per-view, which I know was beginning of May. Uh, I've had this planned in the works and everything, I just haven't had time to do it, so I'm going to do it right now. And I'm going to use this as well to link into uh, my predictions for payback as well. Um, some of these matches will link into that as well. So uh, we'll get to that later on. And I know this. The full card hasn't been presented yet for uh, payback, so what I'll do is I'll link in the description of my uh, full predictions in there, so you can check that out for yourself when it comes up. I'll leave that in the descriptions underneath. As you can see, my blue background, it's the best I can do at this moment. If you want anything decorated, you know, if you want me to hang some T-shirts up or put a poster up or something, I don't know. You know, something to make it look good. Or if you think this is good and good enough for itself, that's okay. Now, this is a test episode, and no, when I say test, I don't mean Andrew Martin. God rest his soul. Uh, this is a test video. Uh, basically, you can call it a pilot episode, and you could probably say it's a, you know, wrestling madness podcast video version, so to speak, or the video podcast. So. So we'll see how this goes, and if you, if you guys like it, you know, hit the like button underneath, you know, subscribe to my channel, and uh, do all that good stuff as well. And if the, if this works, I'll do some more. I'll do some more of this video. If not, well, I'll just stick with the podcast, and I'll get to the podcasts later on as well. So the first match that I want to discuss is uh, RVD Extreme Rules RVD Jack Swagger Cesaro now a great way to start the match the triple threat match elimination which is how it should be this, which is how triple threat matches should be all the time in my view just a three way elimination not best man wins or you know you know first one to get a pinfall and that make the guy beat the beat both the guys or girls or whoever's in there uh, the fist flew in this match uh, from the start, back and forth, you know, Cesaro punching Swagger, RVD punching Cesaro, then Swagger, you know, get all that. Uh, RVD hits a beautiful monkey flip uh, on Cesaro, and Cesaro ends up landing on Jack Swagger, which I thought was really cool. And that's RVD to a T, that's classic RVD, you know, Michael Colson's vintage, vintage I say classic. Uh, a classic RVD to a T. Uh, RVD does a sunset flip power bomb on the outside. Then Swagger takes his head off with a clothesline. He does a sunset fl flip power bomb on the outside of with uh, Cesaro, and then uh, gets up, turns round, and gets his head taken off by Swagger. Which I thought was cool. Swagger takes control of the match, uh, controlling Van Dam, just basically using what he's good at, basically wrestling. You know, wrestling the man down and taking the advantage of controlling Van Dam while Cesaro was out of the way for that point in time. Uh, Swagger had Van Dam in the ankle lock until uh, Cesaro bounces off the ropes. There's a springboard off the ropes and uppercuts him, which I thought was pretty cool. Which is very unique as well because you've seen the you know the, the springboard elbows and the you know the clotheslines. I don't think I've seen an uppercut before. So, I mean, Cesaro's a beast. I'll get to him in a bit. Uh, as well, uh, Cesaro lets. Cesaro hits Swagger, sorry, with a suplex while Swagger's on the apron. The you go for the top rope suplex. Cesaro's standing on the second rope and he lifts him back in while Swagger's on the apron. He lifts him back in and hits him with a suplex. If that doesn't prove Cesaro's a beast. I don't know what the fuck does, so to speak. Uh, and then after that, as uh, Swagger lands, <laughs> out of nowhere, Van Damme hits him with a five star and eliminates him, which was uh, pretty cool. Uh, 
Cesaro just controls Van Dam after that as well, using his power, strength, and freak-ish nature that Cesaro has, and hits a German suplex on him, and classic Van Dam where he gets him on the outside and hangs that over the guardrail. Excuse me, hangs his opponent over the guardrail, and does that uh, that spin kick leg drop that he used to do in ECW, which was good to see that again. Uh, and then gets uh, the near fall back in the ring RVD gets the toys out so to speak gets a trash can out and uh, hits uh, Cesaro with the Van Deminator driving the trash can into his face knocks him out um, goes for the top rope does his fast star frog splash but Cesaro moves out the way and hits his uh, and I think this is Van Dam it's a f basically Van, Van Dam five star frog splashes the uh, the uh, trash can <laughs> and gets a mark for it as you probably saw the following night on Raw he gets a huge mark for it a black eye of some sort and uh, Cesaro picks him up neutralizes him on the trash can and gets the one two three and uh, Cesaro wins the match and gets a big huge win and I don't know what direction they're going with Cesaro at the moment um, I know they're pushing him and trying to push him. Now he's got manager. Now he's a manager with Paul Heyman and everything, and his fights with uh, Sheamus. But I'd like to see him have a feud with uh, Van Dam. Oh, and speaking of Van Dam, Van Dam apparently uh, is now going to. Well, from what it seems on the payback card, he's going to be uh, facing uh, Bad News Barrett after the uh, the one uh, the one night beat the clock tournament they had on Raw. So. That's going to be pretty cool in itself. Seeing Van Dam get a title shot, will it work? No, because I think Bad News Better will retain. But uh, at some point, if that's my phone going off, at some point, if Bad News Barrett loses, I won't be complaining because you know Rob Van Dam, the whole fucking show, not the whole damn show. Michael Cole and WWE.com. Van Dam is and always will be the whole fucking show period not the whole damn show I know it's PG but please blooming act uh, but other than that we'll just have to see where it goes from that point on with Cesaro I hope they push him I hope they give him a title shot uh, at some point um, preferably an, an intercontinental title match because he's already a title shot because he's already had the uh, the United States title, but give me again. It's pointless. Although I would like to see that match with him and Sheamus, by the way. But I think uh, Mr. Cesaro has got a future ahead of him and a big one at that. Now, Alexandra Rusev match. I'm not even going to talk about because we all know what happened. We all predicted it. We all knew it was going to happen. Rusev goes over on uh, Xavier Woods and Our Truth. Although I will give Our Truth credit. I mean, our truth's no pushover. He's a former TNA NWA World Heavyweight Champion. Um, shame WWE don't recognize that, but hey. But he did put up, and he did put up a fight against Rusev, and had him rocking on occasions. But uh, Alexandra Rusev is too strong and hits him with a camel clutch and makes him tap. But I gotta say, am I the only one that thinks that every time I see Rusev on Raw or SmackDown or whatever heck he's on? I don't know why I get a Rocky Four vibe. You know, it's like, you know, playing the part of Ivan Drago is Alexandra Rusev. And playing the part of Drago's wife is his woman as well, who Drago's wife was, uh, I believe, was Bridget Nielsen in the, in the film. You know, I just get a, I just get a, a Rocky Four vibe coming in. When he comes in the ring, I expect him to, you know, I'm, I'm expecting Rocky to come out at some point as well. But that's just the way it is. It's it's just ridiculous. Anyway, I digress. Moving on to Bad News Barrett and Biggie Langston. Right. This was for the Intercontinental Championship, by the way. Advantage Big E from the get-go, using his uh, freakish agility, agility and uh, quickness as well. He's got some quick quickness. Uh, Big E proving to be too strong. He was too definitely too strong for uh, 
uh, Bear News Barrett and I think Barrett News at one point tried to match power with him obviously you're not going to match power with somebody that has a big E I don't care how small he is but he's a freakish guy and uh, Bear News eventually starts to take control of the match hitting a big foot where uh, Big E sits on the sits between the top and second rope and he does them knees, uh, Bad News does them knees to the to his opponent and then just kicks his head off knocks him out of the ring which was I thought was cool. Big E using his power and strength hits a beautiful belly to belly suplex and uh, also at one point as well Big E ends up doing what uh, Mick Foley did to Edge at Wrestlemania once except it wasn't through a flaming table he speeds him through the second, he dabs through the second rope, speeds him and takes him on the outside which was actually pretty cool and pretty uh, intense from the big man but it worked what mistake by Big E, uh, Bad News Barry hits the wings the wings of change, or these are the winds of change which is a, a boss man slam move and gets a near fall and then uh, takes Biggie out with Wasteland and again gets a near fall out of that which you kind of look surprised because that used to be his uh, finishing move before he starts using the bull hammer elbow speaking of bull hammer elbow Biggie goes for big ending uh, uh, Wade Barrett counters it goes to hit him with the big the bull hammer elbow Big E ducks, they bounce off the rope, and then he ducks again to a point, and then they both bounce off the ropes, and uh, Bear News Barrett hits Big E with the, uh, the bull hammer elbow in the style of Tito Santana as well, which was pretty effective, and gets the 1 2 3 and becomes the new Intercontinental Champion. And like I said, he's facing Rob Van Dam at payback, and uh, I believe he's going to retain. Because it'd be pointless putting the, guy, putting the belt on somebody for a month and then having to take away at the next pay-per-view. I just hope this title reign for, for Bad News Barrett pushes him to a world title run. Or to challenging for the world title. Because he damn sure deserves it. He should be there already, to be honest. And I don't mind the Bad News Barrett gimmick and what he says when he comes, Oh, I got some bad news for you. I just want to see him back in the ring. And I got my wish. And he's a champion again. And... I couldn't be more happy. God save the Queen. Love bad news, Barry. And now on to in my in my mind, what should have been the main event? The way they were plugging this, the way they were pushing it to be the main event. The Shield versus Evolution. Now, a brawl kicks off as you would as you would expect in this match. A brawl kicks off. Uh, first battle to the shield. They clear the ring. Uh, e Evolution bail. Hightail it. So it's big. Triple H starts to get back into the ring to take a shot at uh, I believe it was Seth Rollins. You know, trying to get a quick advantage. Rollins turns round and chins him and him and Rollins. Triple H and Rollins start the match. Seth uh, Dives on Triple H through the ropes, and then Orton tries to get involved. He tries to, he does it like a suicide dive through the middle and top rope. Dives on to Triple H. Orton tries to get a cheap shot in, didn't work. Batista tried to get in, but Rollins was just too quick. And uh, after that, Evolution get an advantage. Yeah. After that as well, because uh, as Rollins got back in the ring, Triple H took his head off with a clothesline and. Uh, in what was an evolution dominated match basically evolution started to take control and work on uh, Seth Rollins using basic tag team wrestling and basic uh, well basic normal tag team wrestling keeping the man in his corner isolating a certain person from their tag team partners and just be proceeding to put a beat down on him Orton suplexes Rollins across the ropes he just like he just lifts him up and just dumps him on top of the ropes across the uh, top rope and everything which hurts uh, Ambrose eventually gets tagged in and just t and just goes nuts 
you know the lun what is what's the nickname the lunatic fringe I believe that's what they call him. somewhere around about that anyway he just takes it to rare uh, evolution Reigns uh, goes to speak and while the melee happens Reigns is on the outside attempting to spear Triple H but instead of spearing Triple H Triple H moves out the way and uh, Reigns attempts to spear the uh, the stairs the steel stairs Evolution begins a three on one attack on Ambrose again doing exactly the same what they did with Rollins just pr proceeded to uh, deliver a beat down and control and, and control him Spinebuster, Triple H hits his uh, Arn Anderson Spinebuster on uh, on uh, Dean Ambrose, which kind of looked botched, to, to be honest, but he's it, still hitting, still effective, and uh, gets a near fall on him. And in one mistake from Evolution, gets allows Ambrose to tag in uh, the big man, the monster. Roman Reigns comes in and just unleashes hell on uh, Evolution, bringing the fight to them. Hits a Superman punch on Batista, and then they they get an advantage. Momentum's on their side, and they tri triple power bomb Batista. And one, two, and then Orton pulls the shield out. Orton and Triple H pulls the shield out, and that puts a stop to that. Rollins goes for a dive on Triple H, and this time Triple H moved moved out the way, and. Uh, let's just say the landing for Seth Rollins was not very pretty because he landed straight into the card rail and it's amazing he didn't break his neck Ambrose runs across both tables yeah Triple H and I believe it was Triple H and Orton beating up uh, Seth Rollins in the, uh, the timekeepers area and everything and Danny Ambrose was on the other side next to the uh, Spanish announce table, he gets on both announce tables and just runs across and does his leap on the Triple H and Owen and takes them both out. Like I say, you got, I love Dean Ambrose, I love Seth Rollins, I love Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns is the monster, I love Seth because he's a wrestler and yeah, he's proven that. But if Dean Ambrose, damn, Dean Ambrose is just psychotic and I like him. He's just, he's just crazy, he doesn't care. Just doesn't care, and he proved that in this match. Uh, they get up to a point where I believe in the stands and in Triple H and and I believe Triple H and Orton also Triple H uh, knock uh, Dean Ambrose down the stairs. And as they were down the stairs, Triple H and Orton come down the stairs, proceed to do a two-on-one beatdown on, beat down on uh, Ambrose, knocking him down. You know, just beating him down and everything, but. As that was going on, Seth Rollins was up the top of the stairs, goes up, goes into the stands, goes across the stands to the point where Orton, Triple H, and Ambrose are, and then dives out of dives onto Orton and Triple H from the stands. Uh, probably the craziest thing I've ever seen, and uh, it took out Triple H and Orton, which allowed Reigns to get an advantage after countering the. Uh, Batista bomb attempt, hits a Superman punch, then spears Batista, and the Shield win what was an epic match and probably the match of the night, dare I say, match of the year. Uh, it's a questionable point because f four best matches, well, five best matches I've seen all year in 2014. Brian Daniels, uh, Brian Daniels, Daniel Bryan, I still remember him from Wrinkle Vaughn, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson. Emperor White at the Royal Rumble. Go back and watch that. That's how you kick off a pay per view. Shield vs. the Wyatt at Elimination Chamber. AJ Styles and Roderick Strong from Ring of Honor. Up until the botch at the end. Uh, a match from. Uh, it is Semyon. I don't know. I, I don't know his name, but it was a match from NXT that involved Cesaro. I believe it was the very first live show they did. Um, it was the first match on the card, and it involved Cesaro. And I have to check the name of the uh, and it, uh, the guy. I know he is, but I I don't know the name. Okay. You guys might know, and I apologise if I don't for not remembering as well. But go back and watch it. It was the first day uh, when they got the network out. It was the first show, the the first live big show they did on on NXT as well with 
you'll know what I'm talking about. And then the fifth match was this one in Evolution, but I would have to say this match was probably match of the year. This other year with the Wyatt family in the shield at uh, Elimination Chamber. And if not them two, definitely Bray Wyatt and Daniel Bryan at Royal Rumble. But that's just my opinion. But those are my favourite matches. Those five matches are my favourite matches, oh yeah. And considering what's going to happen to payback between these two teams, no holds barred, I would probably say Evolution will take that at, at uh, payback. And f it seems that there's a possible chance that the rumours are true, from what I'm hearing. Uh, that uh, Battleground is going to be a, an old school the War Games match. Two cages, two rings, old school War Games that they used to do a four brawl in uh, WCW between these two teams. Uh, so if that happens, whew, I'll definitely buy that pay per view, no doubt. Uh, but we have to wait maybe two we've got two more we've got one more pay-per-view before Battleground which is Money in the Bank after uh, Payback so be interested to see what happens between Evolution and uh, The Shield going into Payback as well going th well going through Payback because Battleground's after that and if the rumours are true with this War Games match they've got a long wait they'll have to think of something to go through uh, Money in the Bank too but I'm sure they will Right, on to the next main match, which was uh, Cena and Bray Wyatt versus... Well, Cena versus Bray Wyatt in a cage match, I should say. Um, yeah. <laughs> what do you say about this match? Uh, Cena, from the start, Cena tries to make a wrestling match, which was to no avail, and Bray just dominates Cena throughout this match, quite frankly, and... It got to a point where the more times Cena tried to eliminate, tried to g g manage to get an advantage and create some separation, Cena used to go, try to go over the cage and Luke Harper and Eric Rowan would be like in the way or staring at him, making him think uh, about it. Uh, Bray uses the cage as a weapon. He, he just mainly dominated Cena. This was this is the thing about. WWE and Cena to me, why they allow him to take a beat in the match and have him make this huge comeback is kind of ridiculous to me. I know he's super Cena, but uh, don't get me wrong, I like John, but it doesn't look good to him, in my opinion. And it doesn't look good for Bray Wyatt as well. Uh, Bray begins to, to dominate Cena, toying with him, he was just messing about with him. You know, he had in, you know, the whole world in his hands and he had seen the right way, one of them and everything. And Cena hits a drop kick and a perfect one of that as well. He got it. He really got up there into the face area, which is which is kind of different as well because the previous time he's done a drop kick from what I've seen, he usually hits him in the chest area. But he's managed to get right up there in the face uh, part of the area, which was uh, pretty good for his standards at least. Never not denying that Cena's not a great wrestler. He's well, they to say he's the modern day Hulk Hogan, isn't he? So. Sorry, Hulk. Bray uses the cage as a weapon again. And uh, goes to the well one too many times and Cena ends up managing to bring to buy himself some time. Cena begins his fight back, the famous five moves of doom. You know, the shoulder, the shoulder, the sidewalk slam thing, the five knuckle shuffle and, and that. Uh, Bray tries to go climb out and of the cage and Cena grabs out of him and gets him into a power bomb and turns it into a sit out power bomb. The Wyatt family appro proved too much for Cena. They proved too much for him because while Cena was trying to fight Bray in the cage, goes out in the ring, goes out to the top over the top rope, or goes through the cage. There was always a white family member in the way, so to speak. You know, and if if one of them wasn't there, the other one was surely not far behind. So it was just basically mainly a three-on-one match. And then Cena goes to the top, 
Brave misses the Sinton splash, but then eventually hits it. And Cena goes to the top rope, and Luke Harper goes up there with him, and they get into a fight on top of the cage. Kind of thing. What did I say? Top rope. Not that. Goes on top of the cage and hits him. And goes into a fight and goes into a fight, and then. Cena gets an advantage and pulls him in, which leaving Eric Rowan on the outside, so it turns into a two on one handicap match inside. But Cena had probably had no choice to do it, just to at least try and get an advantage of going out. Cena gets the F STFU on Bray Wyatt to no avail, and they try to, you know, tries to climb out. Cena, it's the AA. The attitude adjustment, formerly known as the FU, on top of the air, uh, from top rope in the ring, and hits it. Kind of what he did to Bobby Lashley before the thing, and gets a near fall. Uh, actually, no, he didn't get a near fall. Uh, it got broken up by Harper. You see, now then eventually grabs out Rowan. Goes to, goes to climb off over the cage, grabs Eric Rowan, pulls him, pulls him by his beard and everything, and eventually knocks him out, and gets his chance to win. But as he went through the ropes to go through the cage door, the lights went out. And as the lights went out, this voice starts singing, "The whole world, you know, he's got the whole world in his," in a really grungy Barry White type of voice. The lights come back on, and Cena is staring to the eyes of a kid, of a child, C Nation, uh, singing the whole world in his hands, a uh, song. And Cena's face was a picture. He, he, he couldn't believe what he was seeing. And then Cena gets back in, turns round, takes Sister Abigail, Bright escapes, Bray Wyatt escapes, and wins the match. And from what I gathered as well, from what I got after that pay-per-view as well, any of you guys remember Jameson, who used to hang around with the uh, Bushwhackers? You know, that's that four-eyed nerd kid, that, that nerd guy who used to hang around with the Bushwhackers. If you don't believe me, go and watch Royal Rumble in 1992. You know who I'm talking about. He used to hang around with the Bushwhackers. That's his son, as I found out, which was uh, pretty spectacular. But, uh, yeah, that's how it was. And leading into the uh, last man standing match, you're gonna be, I'm probably going to get hit some hate for this, but I think Cena will probably end up winning the last man standing match. He wins WrestleMania, Bray wins Extreme Rules, Cena's going to win the last man standing match, and that's going to be the end of the feud. And Cena wins the feud, so to speak. Which is, hey, yeah, it's WWE. In there. <laughs> uh, and after this, no doubt Cena will probably end up da back in the title picture. <laughs> yeah. Be interesting to see who he will face, though, if he gets back in the title picture. But um, from what it seems, it probably won't be Daniel Bryan. But I'll get to that later. Right, Divas Champion Page versus uh, Tamina Snooker. Now, if you go back to one of my episodes on the podcast, you know exactly how I feel about this Divas Division. Because I dropped a pipe bomb on this Divas Division. And I dropped a pipe bomb on the way that WWE were using Paige. Uh, Beige, uh, Beige. Paige using the hit and run tactics at the beginning. You know, hit and run kind of thing. Because to me, there's a monster. You know, she's a. Uh, I guess you could put Tamina in the category of a Beth Phoenix kind of thing. She's a monster and she she use her power and strength and that's what she did. Eventually, uh, at one point, Paige goes to the top rope and goes to do a move and, you know, using the quickness, eventually gets to the top rope and then Tamina just turns around and kicks her right off the ropes. <laughs> top ropes and she ends up on the outside, basically nearly taking her head off. Uh, And she just begins to punish the champion, the Divas champion, you know. Like if she was... It was like a David and Goliath match kind of thing, you know, just punishing her. And, and basically just moving on from uh, there. 
page on the outside goes for Frankenstein, which is a hooligan matter to you people. You know, but to me, that blocks it, spins her around, and just like literally just drives her right into the guardrail. The black uh, guardrail thing. It just literally knocks her in there. Again, power advantage goes to. Goes to uh, Tamina. Paige manages to get a power bomb on Tamina. Uh, from the near, I think Tamina was on the second rope. And then uh, Snook Snook at one point ends up doing a Chris Harris catatonic move, which is gets gets them into a fall away slam position, and then spins it round and ends up being into a, like a rock bottom kind of move to get a near fall, and then. Uh, one mistake by her, Snooker, and Paige uses that submission hold uh, move, which has got a many, many wins, from what it seems. And uh, Paige still retains the Divas Championship belt. Uh, and now on to Daniel Bryan. And Kane. Daniel takes the fight to Kane, which the minute Kane was walking down the yard, he just got through the ropes and the fight was on from that point. You know, it took the fight to Kane until uh, he manages to run into a boot. Yeah, Brian runs into Kane's big foot. Kane body slams Brian on the guardrail, but as he was doing it, he put a chair behind the uh, he picked him up into the body slam position puts a chair behind the behind their Brian he's gonna body slam him and then body slams him on the guardrail driving the chair into the back of Brian which was very creative from the uh, big red monster not the big red brown noser now uh, and then the fight as it would extreme rules the fight ended up fighting backstage and it went all over the place. Uh, Kane ended up throwing a TV into an ice, a bucket of ice water, a uh, monitor, whatever you want to call it, and the fight goes all over backstage. Kane backdrops Brian on a car, and uh, Kane gets eventually knocked out by Brian. I think it was a, a wrench or a crowbar or something, knocks him out, and then Brian puts him on the air uh, forklift. And to make sure that he's actually down, proceeds to beat the crap out of him with it, with the uh, crowbar. It proceeds to literally beat the crap out of him. Boom, 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 boom. And then Kane couldn't move, and then the next minute, Brian's driving Kane back to the ring in a forklift. And then lifts him back in and everything. And then proceeds to do a diving headbutt from the top of the forklift onto Kane in the ring and gets an near fall. Brian goes to end up d diving uh, after that. I think he gets a near fall out of it and then goes through his. Uh, I think Brian, after the headbutt, goes to his knee. Uh, goes through his uh, knee, his padded to knee, uh, the running knee. But came, overpowered him and ended up uh, grabbing out of him and choke slamming him. And then Kane gets a near fall and proceeds a brutal beatdown with a chair. And then Sidewalk slams him onto the chair. Again, probably, then again to get a near fall. And then uh, Brian go Kane goes for a choke slam and Brian counters Kane. And then Kane ends up running into the chair that he put in between the top and middle rope. T top and middle turnbuckle, excuse me. Uh, Brian does his uh, trademark top rope drop kick, which is his trademark, and he, the kip up and everything, and then gets Kane on the outside, goes to do a dive on Kane, which eventually which worked to a point. Brian begins to hit Kane with everything he sees. He was basically everything he picked up. You know, it could have been a chair, it could have been a kendo stick, could have been a TV monitor, announce table monitor. Anything he can get his hands on to to rock the big uh, the 
Big Ben. Daniel Bryan eventually like runs across, climbs on top of the announce table after fighting with Kane. Now he manages to get an advantage and does like a tornado DDT off the announce table on the Kane. Anything to keep the big man down. Anything to keep the big man down. And then uh, at one point as well, after that, Kane tries to, uh, Brian rather, tries to dive through the ropes onto Kane and gets choke slammed. <laughs> Literally. Dives through the ropes, Kane grabs out of him and just choke slams him through the announce table. Uh, and then Brian eventually gets back up, but as Brian was getting back up, we witnessed the return of the Flaming Tables. That's right, the Flaming Tables were back. And the Flaming Tables were got in. And they ended up fighting above it. And Brian eventually gets an advantage to a point where, he's put, where he does this. And he pulls Kane back. And then Kane ends up going through the table. And the guy's there to pull the, the you know, with the fire extinguisher to put him out quick. And then Kane gets back in, hits, gets hit with a running knee, and Brian retains and manages to get out of there. And then Brian, Kane sits back up, and, and that was the end of the show. And that was the end of the show, and you just see Kane's pissed off face and Brian wondering what to do, but he managed to get out of there with the belts. Obviously, from what it seems, you might not be having the belts for very much longer. Hopefully not, but we have to wait to see this coming week on Raw. Uh, this is again recording on the 22nd, so it'll be next week's Raw, which will be the 26th. And uh, yeah, that was it. So, uh, I mean, I enjoyed the pay-per-view. I enjoyed the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. Out of five, I would say a four. Hopefully Payback can top it. But uh, yeah, we'll have to see. And like I said, bad news better to retain the Intercontinental Championship. Cena to win the last man standing match. Evolution to win the uh, the big six man war as well. And God knows the status of the world title. Oh, we'll have to wait and see. But like I said, I'll put a link. I'll put in the description the full predictions when the full card gets eventually uh, released so look out for that when it comes in but in to a point that is it as far as that goes uh, just want to say as well before I go a quick thank you to you guys as well for supporting the podcast the Wrestling Matters podcast uh, Podomatic Rankings from what I've seen number 8 um, I've made the top 10 get in and it uh, reached number 8 in the charts in, in the rankings charts as well there's another ranking above it as well but I focus on the single charts for my category at least of my community and whatnot. and I got number 8 so thank you so much to you guys whether you're in England or America or whoever's getting it there'll be more to come believe you me episode 8 will go out next Monday uh, which is the 26th uh, and thank you so much for your support as well and shout out to Kenny Killer and Sugar Shugs as well from uh, Sunday Segway as well thank you so much for your for your input as well and more importantly thanks to all of you and thanks to everybody else who supported you know who you are James Powers Vicky Earls and whoever else has supported it as well which has helped out in that respect now I don't know if I should do this, but I got a text message, or I got a message today wanting me to put my opinion towards something for a certain other person as well, but I think I'm going to do it myself. Uh, people have asked me about the uh, Raw ratings. The Raw ratings have been very low as of late, and the SmackDown ratings from what it seems, but I heard the, the Raw rating this past week was low. The reason why it's low is because no one cares, in my opinion, about the entertainment. From what it seems, there seems to be more entertainment than there is wrestling. 
and at least from what I've gathered, sometimes less is more. I think that they should establish. I mean, at the end of the day, it's supposed to be a wrestling program, and I think they should, in my opinion, at least. And this is all I'm saying on the matter. And I'll do another thing about it later. It, they should just focus on the wrestling. Uh, you know, add more. You know, keep the entertainment, but put less entertainment. Off. Keep it 50-50. You know, put more wrestling on. Don't put two-minute matches on or ten-second matches on. I mean, I can understand why SmackDown got a low rating. I mean, the way they used Titus O'Neil in that match with their Sheamus that he had when he turned around and got a bro kick. And the match lasted about more than, say, a minute, 30 seconds. You've got to make the matches longer than that. You can't have them matches at all. You shouldn't have them matches at all, man. I mean, it's supposed to be a wrestling program. Um, and apparently SmackDown is celebrating a birthday this year as well, so they've got to do better than what they've done so far up until that point, and they better do it quick. But I've always said Raw's the number one. Well, out of the big two, Raw and SmackDown, I've always said Raw's the number one show, the A show. In my opinion, I don't think there's something. I just think there's something missing about SmackDown. Maybe Stone Cold Steve Austin back in the day and everything, but it's. Now SmackDown's become like a B show to Raw, you know. They have Monday Night Raw on the Monday, and SmackDown's become like a follow-up to it, to Raw as well. For those who missed it and choose to watch SmackDown, they've started they, to to add more highlights from Raw moments than they do, or talk about Raw a lot than they do about SmackDown, and you know. It's all about balance for me, but hopefully it'll improve in the, in the uh, coming weeks or months or whatever. It'll have to, at least. But I'll still watch WWE no matter how good or bad the ratings are, because I'm a WWE fan. So It is what it is. Good, bad, ugly. I'm a WWE mark until the day I die, so that's just something that's got to be used to, got to get used to. Anyway, I'll leave you for now, guys. That's it. Hope you've enjoyed this. Um, if you have, like uh, in the description, like like the video underneath. Hit the like button. You know, give me your feedback as well. Be nice to me. This is my first one, and this is a pilot episode. Okay. Okay. If if this doesn't work, I'll still continue with the podcast and everything. But I want to do something different. Um, I guess you could call this a video podcast. But like I said, this is like a pilot episode, and if this is if this gets over well and this is well suited and well liked, I will uh, look to do more in the future. If not, back to the drawing board. But like I say, it is what it is. So thank you so much for for watching and listening and whatever. Look out for episode eight, and I'll see you soon. Peace.